Hello and welcome to the second part of UTT APNAC Basic Configuration. In this video, I'll show you how to set up an AP in fit mode. In order to do this, we will need at least one AP and one access controller. UTT access points now include WA1300N, WA1505N, WA1700N, WA1900N, WA2200N and WA2500N. UTT access controllers now include WX800S and WX1000S. On initial installation, we should make sure the PC or laptop we use for the configuration is in the subnet 192.168.1.0 because the default IP address of the access controller hereafter shown as the AC, is 192.168.1.252. And please make sure that the AP is connected to the same subnet which the AC is in. Open a web browser on the PC. Log on the web UI of the AC with 192.168.1.252. The default username and password are both admin in lowercase. A D M I N. Then we will be able to see the map page. Then we can configure the map page first. There are several amazing features on this page, but we will not discuss them in this video. We will demo the basic map configuration later. Next, we need to go to the admin page and configure the parameters such as the IP address and the password of the AC. It is strongly suggested to change your default administrator password. Next, we need to configure the system time. Some features rely on the correct system time to take effect properly. We can set the time zone and SNTP server on this page. Next, we need to configure WLAN. The WLAN page is under the settings menu. We can set the SSID we wish to assign to the AP, the password for the wireless network, and QoS on this page. Also, the radio frequency parameters need to be confirmed. We can go to the RF page and configure 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz wireless signal. After configuring the WLAN, we should join the AP into the WLAN. In this case, we are able to connect to the wireless network on AP with our laptop, phone, or other wireless devices. To do this, we need to go to the access point page and join the AP into the WLAN. Okay, let's take a look at the demo configuration. Open a web browser. Enter 192.168.1.252. Enter the default username and password, which are both admin in lowercase, and press enter. Now we're on the web UI of the WX800S and we can see this is the map page. This is the default drawing which is used for demo purpose. You can add your own real map by clicking configure map here and click add. I do not have another map, so I'll use the default map to show you the configuration. We can see there is an AP list on the left side and there is an AP in it. This is my testing AP and let's click and hold and drag it onto the map. Okay, now the AP is on the map. Let's suppose we install the AP here. Next, let's click system. We can see the information of this access controller here. But what we need to do is to focus on admin. If you want the AC to be in a certain VLAN, enter the VLAN ID here. By default, it is zero, which means no VLAN. We can change the IP address of the AC, the subnet mask, the gateway IP address, and DNS server IP address here. It is highly recommended to change the default password to ensure safety. Next, let's click time. The current system time is displayed here. We can change the time zone. Click and select. Let's say CST and select. 
We can also enable daylight saving time here. We can either set the time manually or make it synchronized with the SNTP server. Normally, we use SNTP servers. You can search for a stable SNTP server to apply here, then click OK to save the configuration. Next, let's click Settings. We can click Add to configure a new WLAN or click Edit to change settings in the existing WLAN. Configure a name for this WLAN so that we know which one this is. Configure the SSID. I named it UTT Wireless 1. This is the name of your wireless network. Select the type for this WLAN. There are office, voice, or guest to choose. Click Next. If you need the wireless clients to join a certain VLAN, you can select Static and set the VLAN ID here. We can also enable a DHCP server here if we need. Click Next. Select Personal and Security Level. Configure Security Mode. If you have a radio server, you can select WPA, WPA2, and configure the WPA mode, Security Mode, Radio Server IP Address, Radio Server Port, and Radio Password according to your own scenario. Otherwise, it is recommended to apply WPA PSK, WPA2 PSK, and set a password here. Then, configure QoS. We can control the speed rate of the wireless clients on this page. Select the bandwidth limit mode. Each means the specified bandwidth will take effect on each single client. While share means that all the clients connected to this WLAN will share the configured bandwidth. Click OK to save the configuration. Next, click RF at the bottom. Click Add or Edit to configure the radio frequency entry. Set the name here. We can check or uncheck to enable or disable 2.4G or 5G for this RF entry. Configure the wireless mode. Select a region. ETSI applies in Europe and FCC applies in the US. Select the channel, channel width, and speed according to your need or just keep them as auto. We can manually change the RF power. There are three levels, high, medium, and low. Sometimes when there are too much wireless interference, it is better if the RF power is lower. We can also change the beacon interval, enable or disable WMM, short guard interval, and short preamble. Click OK to save the configuration. Next, click Access Points. Select the AP we want to configure. They can be managed in a batch. Then click Configure. Select the RF entry we wish to apply. Click OK and wait a moment. Click OK to confirm. Click WLAN. Select the WLAN we want the AP to join. Each AP can join at most 4 WLAN currently. Click Join WLAN and wait for it to finish. At last, click System. Change the login password for the AP. Click OK and wait for 5 seconds. OK, now the AP is well configured. We can connect our wireless devices to the wireless network on the AP. That's all for FET AP initial settings. For more information, please feel free to go to www.ettglobal.com. It is our official website. As always, you can contact us by sending an email to support at uttglobal.com. I hope this video is informative to you and I'd like to thank you for watching.